Uh, hi, ladies and gentlemen. This lesson is about investigating conductivity and insulation. Um, it's linked to GCSE physics, um, energy stores and transfers, and it's about how energy uh, transfers from a hot place to a cold place and the rate at which that happens um, and, that, and why this is important. So today we're learning about what conductivity and energy, uh, learning about conductivity and energy transfer and why this is important in designing uh, useful products or buildings. Um, there's a lot of crossover with this lesson with um, with the first lesson in this series which is to do with conduction but it's concerned mainly with how we investigate conductivity rather than the process of conduction itself. Uh, so the do now that's on there we have four, uh, four five sets of images just here um, of what do they show and what is their function and what do they have in common. It would be a good idea for you to uh, to discuss this or write down some key ideas or just a couple of sentences um, and pause the presentation whilst you have a good think about that. OK, so clearly, because this lesson is about conductivity and insulation, the uh, all of these uh, um, pictures have something to do with the transfer of thermal energy or heat. Uh, and in fact, the, what, the, they are all devices that are involved in either transferring thermal energy or stopping the transfer of thermal energy. So what you've got, um, starting at the bottom here, is you've got a, a, a cavity wall insulation. So the insulation there is designed to stop heat transferring from inside a house to uh, the external part of the house, so we'd lose energy. In the bottom at the middle here, you have a car radiator. Um, and that's uh, and the whole point of that is to actually uh, it's actually to actively transfer energy, um, and uh, there's lots of features of that car radiator that, that allow it to do that. The first being that it has a very very large surface area. The second that it's painted um, painted a dull black colour. Um, all of these things help um, increase the amount of thermal energy transfer, and uh, you'll have an idea about that already if you've watched any of the previous lessons on radiation and thermal energy transfer. Um, we've got a double glazing profile just there um, and that is designed specifically to prevent thermal energy transfer out of windows. We've got a thermal jacket there that's filled with insulating material um, so that's also designed to prevent heat loss from you to the cold environment and at the top here is actually part of a circuit board and the bit that we're really interested in are these aluminium pieces with the fins. These, uh, these are actually placed on top of the microprocessors and their job is to transfer the heat away from the microprocessor and spread it out into the environment. So effectively, it's um, a type of radiator, um, a, a little mini radiator, and uh, it allows it to do that because, uh, well, it does that quickly because it has such a high surface area um, and the aluminium is so conductive. So let's look at our learning outcomes. So what we should be able to do by the end of this lesson is explain the difference between conductors and insulators in terms of their thermal conductivity. Um, describe the factors that affect thermal conductivity and describe experiments investigating the thermal conductivity of different materials. Um, you'll also be looking at some examples of, uh, of uh, experiments and looking at um, analysing the results and drawing conclusions from these investigations. Right, so I'd like you to consider a beaker surrounded by an insulator. So there you've got a small beaker surrounded by an insulator and it's got water at 100 degrees C and it's placed into a larger break beaker, uh, which also contains water, but the water is at room temperature represented by the blue color. So you've got hot water in the small beaker and you've got cold water in the surrounding large beaker. You can see that the uh, temperature on the thermometers are um, set at uh, 120 degrees. Uh, oh, sorry, 100 degrees in the, in the inside and 20 degrees on the outside. So what happens? Well, clearly the temperature in the small beaker will decrease and the temperature in the, the large beaker will increase until they are equal. And you can see that happening just there. So, that, so the temperature in the small beaker is decreasing, its thermal energy is being passed out through the insulating material and the, be the large beaker is increasing in temperature. So the key thing is this, is that, uh, that how is that energy actually passing into the cool water? Um, and you need to think about the movement of particles in the hot and cold water. So let's focus on that boundary just there. And the particles in the hot water have a lot of kinetic energy. And what they do is they collide with the walls of the beaker, causing the beaker particles and the insulator to gain energy and the hot particles to lose energy. The energy then passes through the walls of the beaker and insulator by conduction. You can see that happening there. That's the particles knocking into each other. 
um, and then the thermal energy is then radiated into the cooler liquids and so its particles gain energy. So you've got radiation and conduction working together to transfer the energy through the walls of the beaker. But, but the key thing here is that, we're, that what we're doing is we're transferring the energy of particles in one place and because of these heat transfer processes, they're transferring into a cooler place. And, heat, and this is one of the key laws of thermodynamics, which is that, that uh, thermal energy will always move from a hot place to a cold place. Right. So what's the point of talking about that? Well, to understand thermal conductivity and insulators and how we can change insulators to improve them, um, we, what we need to be able to do is understand how these heat, uh, heat transfers take place. So how can we change the material to allow the thermal energy to transfer at a lower rate from one side to another? So let's think about the vocabulary of what's there, uh, what it says there. What we're talking about is how do we change the material? Do we make it thicker? Do we make it thinner? Do we change the material entirely? Do we give it a bigger surface area? Do we give it a smaller surface area? Do we paint it a different color? You may already have some ideas about that. However, um, what we're talking about is we want to transfer the thermal energy at a lower rate. So we want less heat to pass through or the heat to get through more slowly. So we're talking about improving that material as an insulator. So the first thing that we can do is that we can decrease the surface area, um, uh, which decreases the rate of thermal energy transfer. Now, why is this important? Well, it's important in a whole range of different things. Um, at the beginning of the lesson, uh, um, I showed you some uh, some radiators on the front of a, a radiator on the front of a car and also a, a heat sink um, on the motherboard of a computer and both of those devices wanted to increase the rate of thermal uh, thermal energy transfer and so they had large surface areas elephants have exceptionally large ears and one of the reasons is that those uh, that it has large ears is because it when it's hot it flaps those ears about so that it can transfer energy quickly if we want to reduce the amount of thermal energy transfer, we decrease the surface area. That's why huddling them up, up small, if you're cold, makes you warm, well, doesn't make you warmer, but it stops you losing energy as quickly. Uh, that's why um, um, animals like Arctic foxes have tiny, tiny ears, um, but the desert foxes have very, very large ears. So the surface area affects the rate of thermal energy transfer. Maybe obviously, uh, if we increase the thickness of the insulating material, we will decrease the rate of thermal energy transfer because there, is, there are more particles uh, for the heat to travel through. Um, and then changing the material to one with a lower thermal conductivity. So thermal conductivity uh, is, the, is a measure of how easily heat energy passes through a material. So if we change to a one with a lower thermal conductivity, we will decrease the rate of thermal energy transfer and our uh, heat energy will stay rather in one place rather than transferring through to the cold place so easily. So that definition is quite important for this lesson. Thermal conductivity is a measure of a material's ability to conduct heat. Um, and next lesson we'll also be talking about uh, briefly about U values. The U value is simply a, a, a number assigned to the thermal conductivity. So the lower the U value, the, uh, uh, the lower thermal conductivity. And so the battery insulator or something is. So explain the difference between conductors and insulators in terms of their thermal conductivity. A conductor will have a high thermal conductivity, whereas an insulator will have a low thermal conductivity. Factors that affect thermal conductivity could be the thickness of the material, the surface area of the material, and the type of material. Um, now what we're going to look at for the next part of this lesson is we're going to look at some experiments where we can inve investigate the thermal conductivity of different materials. So here's the first one. What we have is uh, four different metal bars. They have equal dimensions, so the same length, the same diameter. Um, and they're all uh, placed into a bowl of hot water by the, to the same depth. On each of those bars, there's a thermometer strip. Uh, it's one of those things that, uh, that you could stick on the side of a fish tank or on your forehead, and it will change color as it changes temperature. So the better the conductor, the quicker the blue thermometer strip turns yellow. Um, uh, so this is a very simple experiment, and we're gonna have a look at what might happen. So there they go. Clearly the copper starts off really quickly. There's the aluminium. 
the brass and the steel are uh, changing more slowly. So there we have it. So if we were to look at the results, there's some results. The aluminium, the time taken was 32 seconds, copper 25 seconds, brass was 70 seconds, and steel was 110 seconds. Clearly the little animation was much speeded up there. But there are three questions there that I would like you to answer in your notes right now. Uh, which metal had the highest thermal conductivity and why? How would you ensure that the experiment was a fair test? Um, and we already discussed some of those ideas at the beginning uh, of this slide. And what kind of graph would you plot to display the results and why? So what I would like you to do is pause the presentation just now and have a go at answering those questions and restart when you're ready. Okay, so let's have a look at some of those things. So the first thing, copper is clearly the, uh, the material with the highest thermal conductivity because the time taken for the thermometer strip to change was the lowest or the least. So the, high, the highest thermal conductivity. The lowest thermal conductivity conversely was steel because that took the longest. Incidentally, all three of these are metal, oh, sorry, all four of these are metals. Um, if we had a non-metal, for example, wood or plastic, clearly the time would be much, much longer because they are much better insulators with a much lower thermal conductivity. How do we ensure that the experiment was a fair test? Well, we'd ensure the thermometer strip was the same distance above the water on each rod. We were ensuring that the rods were the same depth in the hot water. So we're making sure that the start temperature and the surface area in contact with the water was the same in each case. And the thermometer was at the same distance from there. So, so there was no variation in, in the distance that the heat had traveled, simply on how quickly the heat is traveling in each material, which is what we're investigating. And what kind of graph? Clearly the results here are categoric. So we would use a bar graph or a bar chart. Right, so that, question and scenario is pretty straightforward but this is very typical of the sort of questions you might get in an exam where you'll get some, an experiment that you may not have seen before and um, you might have seen something similar but you but you might not have seen an exact experiment like that but you'll be expected to analyze the results and you'll be expected to draw conclusions and answer questions from those results so there's something that you really need to pay attention to okay let's have a look at a different type of ex uh, investigation so in this investigation, we're investigating the rate of thermal energy transfer. Now, when we're looking at the rate of thermal energy transfer, we're looking at how much energy is passing across our, or through our insulation over time. So what we've got here is, uh, is an experiment very similar to, one we, uh, to something we looked at earlier. But what we have is a situation where we're controlling the temperature of the water in the small beaker. So we've got an immersion heater in there to make sure that it stays at 90 degrees. So we've got a heat source that's at a, a constant temperature. And what we're gonna do is we're going to measure the change in temp temperature of the uh, water in the large beaker over a period of about 10 minutes. Um, I've said a time period of say 10 minutes because that's completely arbitrary. You can make that up. You could say five minutes, you could say 20 minutes. As long as you're talking about a specific time period and a number of readings you're gonna take in that time, that's all you'd need to do. And describing an experiment like this is something that you that is very likely that you'll have to do. So, uh, so I'm modeling that for you here now. Um, so the temperature in the outer beaker will increase as the heat energy is transmitted through the insulating material, and that's what we're monitoring. So if we're measuring it every uh, 30 seconds or so, over a period of 10 minutes, the results could be plotted onto a bar graph. We might do a, a table first as well, or you could plot directly. So uh, I'm assuming that the temperature in the, um, in the large beaker starts at 20 degrees because that's about room temperature. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look at that change in temperature over time in both beakers. So there we are. We're plotting our line for thermometer two for the large beaker and thermometer one. And you see that it's, uh, thermometer two gradually increases to the same temperature as the uh, water in the small beaker thermometer one. So this is a very typical graph and you might be asked to plot a graph like this or you might be asked to analyze um, what the graph means. So let's have a look at what, what sort of conclusions we can draw here. So the first thing is that the temperature of the water in the large beaker, the outside beaker, will increase until it reaches the same temperature as the water in the small beaker. That's because the, uh, it is because the outside beaker cannot get hotter than the heat source that's 
providing the energy to it. Um, by the same token, eventually it will reach the same temperature um, as long as the heat isn't being lost elsewhere. The next thing, the line is steep at the beginning, which means that the rate of thermal energy transfer is greater at the start, because, uh, and this is because the temperature difference between the water and in the beakers is greater. So because we've got 90 degrees on the inside beaker and 20 degrees on the outside beaker, we've got a greater rate of thermal energy transfer. As time goes on, the gradient of the line gets uh, shallower, and so the rate of thermal energy is transfer is lower because the temperature difference between the water and the beakers is lower. So this is the sort of conclusion that you might be expected to draw, and it means uh, and has applications for, uh, for buildings because if you have a very, very warm building on a very, very cold day, you are going to lose heat more quickly. So you'll need better insulation. So for example, uh, uh, um, uh, you may in, uh, in the evening draw the curtains earlier because you want to make sure that you're preventing the thermal energy transfer um, from the hot room to the cold outside. Right, now the next thing is this. What I would like you to do is draw a sketch of the graph and I'd like you to add to that line, um, the line that you would expect to get if thicker insulation was used. Um, so if you sketch the graph, remember sketching the graph is, uh, doesn't really require you to write as to draw a scale, but simply to draw the trends and label the axes. So uh, pause the presentation now um, and when you've sketched the graph and the line you expect with thicker insulation, uh, um, restart and we'll have a look at that. Okay, so if the insulation material is thicker, what would it do to the rate of thermal energy transfer? Well, thicker insulation is better insulation, so energy will travel uh, or, or pass through it more slowly. And so what we, we would expect would be for the te temperature of the water in the uh, outside beaker to increase more slowly. So the rate of thermal energy transfer is lower, that is the gradient is more shallow, because the, uh, uh, because the thermal conductivity of the insulation is lower. But the key thing here is that it will still reach the same temperature eventually. So it still has to reach the temperature of the inside beaker. And that's very, very important. It will be a shallower line, but it will get to the same point eventually. Um, right, so let's have a look at our learning outcomes. There's two experiments that I've shown you there. Um, we've spoken about the, uh, about the variables and how we ensure that they're fair tests. We've looked at the data and we've looked at how we can draw simple conclusions from the data and also more detailed conclusions where we're talking about the rate of thermal energy transfer. So what I would like you to do to finish off is I would like you to download the questions. Uh, there's two questions here for you to have a go at. They're both about experiments involving thermal energy transfer. Um, I'd like you to uh, either write your answers by hand and then, and then post uh, your answers to your teacher, or you could uh, download a copy and, and type directly onto the document. Either way, if you resubmit it to your teacher on Google Classroom, that would be great. Okay, good luck. See you next time.